Um, given the coalition crazy, uh, the Brown Report, and everything else that's going on at the moment, and the Freedom Bill that's supposed to be coming in November, do you believe that will affect how far and how deep we can reverse 13 years of labour infringing our civil liberties? And in that Freedom Bill, what are the most radical things you'd like to see? Um, I don't know how radical the Freedom Bill will be. Um, I haven't really been involved in the, uh, in the process of uh, putting it together. Um, <coughs> what do I want to see in it? Um, that's a very good question. I think... Is it? I, 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 that, not necessarily. I think better better regulation of CCTV is is more important than necessarily just scrapping CCTV. Um, but I I think having better participation from people, and um, because I think all, for for far too long we've had a government that we've had a government that's just told people what they're going to do. And I think better engagement uh, with people uh, and an acceptance that people have different views. Um, I, I, I get absolutely frustrated by, um, by Labour, um, Labour MPs and Tory MPs who tell me about the abuse that they get from their whips um, to, um, to vote a particular way. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting a bit of pressure from uh, the, uh, from the Lib Dem whips at the moment about the uh, tuition fee vote. Um, but the way in which that's handled is so, so different. The mindset is so different within the Liberal Democrats to, uh, to Labour and the Tories. Um, so I think um, just a change in attitudes of the way um, people's individual views are handled, I think, is something that's really important within that Freedom Bill. Whether or not that happens uh, is another matter. Um, I think the Freedom Bill is perhaps not going to be as, um, as successful as, as we might want it to be. Thank you, John. Time for a couple more questions. Um, there was a question at the back. Um, yeah, it's still slightly different though. Um, obviously, the government is in for the Greenies government so far, and obviously, again, we've not got much money. So, do you feel that um, pursuing nuclear energy, which is expensive and it's kind of being damaged by the public? is a better alternative to future energy than, um, say, like wind power or solar power or wave power? Well, I, I have serious... I, I, don't, I don't have... Um, in theory, I don't have any, any sort of ideological opposition to the idea of nuclear energy. If I thought nuclear energy um, was definitely safe and definitely affordable, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, but I think we have serious, question, serious questions need to be asked about whether or not um, any time in the near future um, we can be absolutely certain that, uh, of the safety record of nuclear energy and, based, uh, and all, but more specifically about how to deal with nuclear waste afterwards. And the actual cost of, of the clean-up operation afterwards <coughs> I think makes it uneconomic. And what I hope will happen um, is, is a recognition um, that um, it's expensive. Now, some people dispute that. I, some, peop some people are absolutely committed to, uh, to nuclear energy. I am not convinced. I think when w what we need to do, we also need to look at the carbon cost um, of, uh, of creating energy from, from standard power stations as well, as opposed to uh, wind energy, tidal wave, uh, tidal energy, whatever it might be, because uh, at some point in the future we've got to calculate into the cost of um, the traditional forms of energy, um, the actual carbon cost, uh, and that way I think tidal um, renewables will then uh, stack up far better in terms of the actual cost of renewables uh, than, than other forms. And if we take into consideration the the overall cost of the clean up for um, for nuclear. I think that will um, that will be seen to be more expensive than renewables as well. Any further questions? Question at the front again. Sorry, um, 
Um, I was just wondering what um, the Commission's plans are for um, in reaction to like, the Birmingham elections that are coming up and the like, human rights issues. Um, also, like, maybe, I don't know if you know aware of the issue of Troy Davis and execution in the US. Yeah, years of the death row and like that. Um, <coughs> different answers, <coughs> <laughs> I, I recognise the name Troy Davis, but I can't remember um, who he was now. Do you want me to refresh you? Yeah, yeah, go on. Oh, okay. Um, he's been on death row for 20 or 15 years, can't remember which. Um, he's been told that he's going to die, basically, the 48 hour warning thing. He's had that three times now, only for it to be cancelled every time. Um, he's, the, basically, there's no physical ev evidence linking him to the crime. There are no witness statements remaining apart from one, which is from the guy who's basically the only other possibility in the case. So obviously he's really good at testifying against him. Um, and he's basically, it's because it's, he's, it's the, a lot of really strong feeling that it's essentially a civil rights case because he's black and working class. So there's no evidence linking to the crime. He's been on death for ages. And he's had, he's been told he's going to die three times. Right. Basically. Well, I'd be interested to, for you to send me some details about that particular incident. Um, my colleague, Alistair Carmichael, who's now our chief whip, was the chair of the all-party group in the last parliament. He can't be uh, in the all-party group now because he's, uh, because he's a government whip. Um, but I don't know whether any work has been done on that case, but I'd certainly be prepared to do some, do some digging and see if... I'm not even sure whether that all-party group is still in existence because it had all, all originated from Alistair. Um, I mean, I'm completely opposed to the death penalty, um, and you know, I, I cannot understand why anyone um, would think that it was a good idea. Um, and the whole the whole issue surrounding death row is so barbaric <coughs> in terms of people not knowing until very very um, close to to the the event whether or not they are actually going to get a reprieve or not. And I just don't think in a civil society that, 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 we, that we should do that. I mean, in terms of Burma, um, the government's been pretty, pretty clear in its position of condemnation of Burma. Um, but I think also we need to continue talking um, to, uh, to states that we disagree with as well. Yeah, no, I, mean, I agree with that. But there's issues like people who fund like the um, weapons to Burma, because um, Burma spends over 50% of its GDP on weapons, and um, those weapons come from North South Korea, um, China, Germany, some of them come from Germany. And I just wondered if like, you had any sort of attitudes on how to do with that, and weapons more widely. Sorry, my question's getting really wide, I do apologise to everybody else. Um, I, 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 do th I do think we, we have to seriously look at um, our policies towards selling arms abroad. Um, I, I thought you were going to tell me that we sold arms to Burma for a second, but fortunately you didn't, <laughs> uh, because I'd be pretty appalled if, if that was the case. But certainly, um, and I think spending money on touting our weapons abroad um, is completely unacceptable as well. I've always taken that view. Um, and I think just because it's, a, it's big business for Britain doesn't mean that it's right. Uh, and I'm frankly shocked that Germany is, is selling weapons to Burma. And maybe that's something that could be dealt with through the European Parliament as well, put, putting pressure on, uh, on Germany to put a stop to that. I, I'm surprised, frankly. I don't know if it's like officially sanctioned. You just have to. Sorry, sorry. I'll talk to you. You can talk afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. That was the last question over there. Considering how badly the UK was hit by the recent financial crisis, do you think that there's been uh, an over-reliance on the financial sector and just banking in general in the UK? Do you think that banking regulation is where it should be? Should there be any other reform in that part? Um, yes, I do think there's been over-reliance on it. Um, the, I mean, there's, there's been an issue about um, trying to get rid of regulation, but if there's one area uh, um, that we need to have more regulation, or at least better regulation, it's within the banking industry. Um, I don't profess to be an economist, but I do think there is, uh, I, I take the view that Vince talk about a, separate, a separation of the banks between the standard normal banking and the casino style banking. I think that would be, that would help um, create a safety net for, uh, for people, and then if, if, if someone wants to 
um, throw money away uh, through some casino banking, they can just let that bank go to the wall uh, without um, fear of, uh, of scuppering you know, people's normal savings in, in normal banks. Um, so yeah, I would say that we do need more regulation. And I think that there is going to be some more stuff coming, coming th through from the government in relation to the banking industry over the next few months. Sorry, can I just follow that up just really briefly? Um, so do you think it wasn't a good idea to spend the amount of money that's been spent on bailing out the banks? I, I don't think we were given a choice. Yeah. I, it, it was, we couldn't not have bailed out the banks. Uh, but having bailed the banks out, um, then there's got to be some changes so it doesn't have to happen again. Because the, the normal sort of high street banking uh, part had no part to play. In the, uh, in, in, the, in, in the reason for the banks needing to be bailed out. Um, so having that separation between the high street banking and the casino banking, I think is really important. All right, thanks, John. All right guys, uh, I guess that's the end of the event for today. Uh, just a couple of announcements before you all shoot off. Uh, as I mentioned, it is Women's Week this week and uh, Black and Ethnic Minority Week next week. Uh, as I say, my name's Mo, I, I am on the EU MSU Executive. If you do have any questions about this week or next week, or events that are going on, please do ask me. And uh, a couple of uh, Lib Dem notices. Um, next weekend is uh, the Liberal, Democrat, Liberal Youth uh, National Conference. It's happening here in USU. Uh, so if you're interested and want more information on that, you want to come along, you're more than welcome to. We've got uh, government ministers and quite a few MPs coming to speak at that. Um, the second notice is um, end of this month, in a couple of weeks, uh, Liberal Youth Manchester will be having our AGM, um, so we'll be just going over what we've done over the last year, having elections for Nexus Committee. Uh, so if you're interested to stand, uh, you're more than welcome to come along to that. Uh, look out for more information via our Facebook group, uh, Liberal Youth Manchester, imaginatively entitled. Um, so, uh, yeah, I won't be standing again as chair. Aww. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, so, if, so if you're interested, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but that's it. We've John, you, do you have to rush off or do you have time to pop to the bar for a quick? Um, I've got to be at some... I, 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 was, I was asked if I'd go up and speak to Amanda in the student union about um, <coughs> something, but I've got, I've got to be somewhere else for half seven. So. Okay, so is that a yes or a no? I don't know what time it is. <laughs> it's half six now, so have you got time to come to the bar for quick? Uh, 15, 20? Um, you know you want to. <laughs> Ten minutes. When's the vote? Yeah. Okay. Ten minutes. I okay, well, John's going to come to the bar for a bit. If you want to chat to me, more than welcome to come. But thanks for coming, guys. Thank you.